Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to do another Turner Syndrome video today. a little more in depthly about one of the questions in the Q&A. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll have it linked. Go watch it, go check it out. It's longer than I normally ever post, but I felt like I really needed to to get all of that information in and really do a good job of answering the questions. So go check it out and then come back and watch this one. So the question I want to talk about a little more is about how is Turner syndrome inherited? I know I mentioned in that that it's not. You can't inherit it because of it really being just a little genetic hiccup. And they have not found anything that definitively says what causes it. It's basically just a little hiccup in the conception process that causes this damage that every cell made after a certain point, after that point of hiccup. With that being said, I wanted to kind of go a little deeper with that as to how it's diagnosed. Because it is a genetic disorder, it is in the chromosomes. It is in the DNA. It is in the makeup of the cells. So the way they diagnose it, and even the way they figure out whether you're mosaic turners or classic turners, is through a blood test. And they do what's called karyotyping, where they do a specific blood panel that allows the doctors to see if there are any chromosomal abnormalities, and if so, what that looks like. If it's a whole X missing, or if it's just bits and pieces. So that goes beyond just just diagnosing you as having Turner syndrome, but that then goes into, do you have mosaic or classic? So <laughs> there can be a lot of fear in that, but there can also be a lot of information that you get from that. My mom had an amniocentesis while she was pregnant with me that diagnosed me as having Turner syndrome, and they kind of guessed that they thought I was classic. Even though I don't have all of the major symptoms, even though you can't look at me and really tell, from the amniocentesis, they thought I might be classic. But but that was just the testing of the fluid around me, so that wasn't a definitive testing my blood or anything to know for sure what that would show. And so they did do more genetic testing when I got older and started seeing an endocrinologist. I would say this can be really important because it can tell you which one you are, and knowing whether you're mosaic or classic can be helpful. It, it wasn't a surprise really that I was classic, except the few symptoms that I have. We had been told, or my parents had been told, that I was most likely classic. But when we went to test, hi Max. When we went to test, when I first started seeing an endocrinologist, it was still kind of getting it confirmed because I myself had never been tested and thought there might be a chance I was mosaic instead just because of how few or light the symptoms I actually have are. Which I think for me has made the case even more that it's not just about which one you are, but when in the process it happened. And unfortunately, that karyotyping, that testing can't tell you that. I have asked my current endocrinologist before if there was any way to know where in the process it happened, and she said no. There's no testing for that you can do right now, and so unfortunately, there's no way of getting that information. But I still think it's really interesting to see the difference, and even within the two variations how much difference there is in the girls that have each variation so that is how it's usually diagnosed it's normally you notice symptoms if it's not during pregnancy if there's not a crisis situation like that otherwise it is later in life or it's when things come up and all of a sudden you have to figure out why something's happening and that ends up being the reason. But that is how they confirm it. That's how they officially diagnose it. For me, it did still come back as classic and that kind of just confirmed what we had already been told. But it could have changed. 
that's the beauty of having it confirmed is you can recheck that and make sure you have the right information. And there are tests for the different health issues that can kind of change your picture of what your situation is as you go along. And if you're updating the test, the test can start looking different. So testing has been a major tool in figuring things out, in getting things confirmed and finding out more information. So that's an important part of the whole process, not just being diagnosed. But that is how you find out, that's how you get diagnosed for sure, and that is karyotyping. So, I hope this was helpful, I hope it was informational enough, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and share it with everybody. If you are not already subscribed, click the screen and subscribe, I do videos every day. So, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye!